Welcome, my name is Poor Nielsen with Random Art Attack, and today we're going to be looking at how to create a smart material within Substance Painter. If you're here just for a 10 second tutorial, let me go ahead and go over really quickly how you set up a smart material. You have to have a folder with all the different effects and things underneath it, and then you just right click that and hit Smart Material and you're done. Now if you're here to actually learn how to create a smart, smart material, then I'm, I'm glad you stuck around because what we're going to do is we're going to separate this tutorial into two parts. We're going to do a part where we look at all the different kind of features and functionality of how to create a smart material that affects every single object that you possibly could want by looking at their, their maps. And then we're also going to be looking at two different smart materials that we're going to create together. Um, kind of a tarnished silver look and a wood um, ask thing. They're not super fancy because we only take a couple minutes to it. So go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the tutorial. Here I have a goblet with a normal map and I want to bake some textures. So I'm going to bake everything but the normal because I already have that. And this is going to give me my ambient, my curvature, my position, everything else. Um, so there we go. Now I'm going to show you the wrong way of how to make a smart material first. So my basic workflow would be I'd create a fill layer like this. Let's go ahead and make a gold color. Just select that. Increase metal. Roughness is just fine. Maybe make that a little bit darker. Okay. And now I want some shadows in this. So I'm going to go ahead and create another fill layer and make this um, add a bit. Sorry, let's make this a dark fill color like this. Add a bitmap and then go down to curvature and go ahead and right click this and then add a levels so that we can kind of select exactly what we want. And now I'm going to increase this and you can see how it's making it dark like that, right? Maybe increase that a little bit more. And there I go. Now I have these kind of the lines are being uh, filled in that way using the curvature. Now the problem with this is it's actually if I make a smart material it's not going to use the curvature map of every model it's going to use this texture specifically. So I have not referenced or I haven't pointed towards the curvature map rather I'm pointing towards this texture so that's a bad thing. What you want to do is you want to use a bitmap and then you do add generator. Now any of these generators will point to the correct thing so I'm going to do what's this thing called MG mask editor. Uh, MG Mask Builder is also good. All of these are good, but we're just going to have an in-depth look at this one, okay? And you can see right off the gate, it kind of has some interesting details going on, so that's good. Now, if I make a smart material out of this, it will actually use the curvature map of any object, okay? So it's going to use the curvature map and not the texture image. How this is set up is it's set up basically like a stack of pancakes. Um, you have different layers being added one to another. So you have textures being added to ambient occlusion, being added to curvature, being added to etc. And so as you affect these, you can kind of pile these different, these different methods on. Um, so we're going to go ahead and look at these just one step at a time and see if we can't figure out what this one generator does. And then using that, we can look at any generator. Okay. So right here, I have a texture, a texture two, like I said ambient occlusion, everything is set to zero so it's not using these. The only thing it's using is this curvature. Look at how that's set to 0.5. This global blur will blur all of these uh, different textures. So if it wasn't just the curvature being used but also the ambient occlusion stuff would blur that. If you open up curvature you can see all the different options. It has this invert that I'm clicking and <laughs> it obviously inverts the mask. And so you, you could use this like if you wanted a dark gold color on the inside like this and a lighter color on the outside. There's different, um, sorry, let's turn that off. There we go. There's different blend modes. So these are stacked just like layers in Photoshop. And so how they're blending um, is going to be dictated by this. So you can do multiply, add, anything like that. These different modes will change the different things. So this is curvature or cavities. So you're getting more of the cavities. You have dual that does curvature um, and cavities. And then unprocessed is basically your default one. So let's go ahead and go back to cavities because I want these to be filled in dark. Um, you have all these different things. You have sharp, fine, soft, huge, etc. And basically these layer on top of each other. 
So sharp typically needs to be the highest. It's going to give you the very finest detail. Um, you can't see it very well, but as you start to increase these other ones, you can see how they build. So fine also has some very fine detail. Soft a little bit heavier. Medium is going to be even heavier and so on. Now typically if you make huge larger than the fine, it's going to cover up the fine. If you make huge larger than anything below it, it's going to cover it up. So you can see that right there, right? Um, it's okay to have huge, but you need to understand if you want sharp detail, it needs to be bigger than the huge detail. And, and that's basically it. So you can kind of play around with these. Think of them as levels. Now, on top of this, we have an MG Mask Editor that we've been playing with. You can kind of get this the way you want. And then you can actually add a level mask to this as well. So you could go up to the, the, the layer and right click and hit add level and play around with that as well. So you can stack these. It's a very cool functionality. Um, brightness, all this is doing as you can see me playing around with this. It's, I typically don't touch it. It makes the whole thing either, you know, 0.5 opacity or less or, or makes it really dark everywhere. So that's curvature. If I lower this or increase this, you can see that it's going to use less or more of my curvature settings. So let's go ahead and just put that down to zero so that we can play with other things. Ambient occlusion. If I crank this up, nothing happens. Why? Because the blending mold <laughs> mode is multiply. And so it would be multiplying on top of this. So if I do curvature and ambient, it's hard to see because it's down there at the bottom, but it'd be, it'd be adding those two masks together. If I do normal, let's go ahead and increase the contrast, invert this. It's very hard to see, but because it's not very big ambient, but it's adding the ambient right there. So I changed the blending mode to normal and I inverted it. So you can get some cool effects with that. Again, balance just makes it how big or small it is. Blur is going to blur the sucker and contrast does contrast. So you're starting to see kind of some familiarity. You have an ambient occlusion, change that down to zero. Um, if I go to, which one do I want to do next? These, let's go ahead and do world space. Sorry, took me a little bit. World space is very cool. As this is set up right now, it's doing top to bottom. So it's masking or unmasking the top or the top facing things. And it's masking the bottom facing things. This is great for dust and things like this. The different options, if I go ahead and look at this, you could go right to left, you can go top to bottom, you can go front to back, and then you can invert those to get the different ones you want. So right to left, you can see, now that's actually the right side of the cup. All the right facing things are unmasked. You can blur it, you can do all the different options that you did on the other ones as well. This is a very good option for adding dust or adding some like highlights or sun damage or anything like that to a model. Um, you can mix more than one at a time. I typically only do top to bottom though. And so there you go. Let's go ahead and close that one and then increase position gradient. Position gradient is cool because it will fill it from top to bottom using a smooth gradient. So this is great for like highlights or anything of that nature. You can change the contrast to kind of make it go up or down. You can change the balance to make it stronger or less strong. And of course you can invert it. So let's go ahead and do that. You can see it just flips like that. But this is, this is extremely cool because it's just giving you position like that. So I love position gradient. Thickness, thickness is cool. It basically masks all the skinny parts like such. And it's good for things like subsurface scattering or anything like that. Now these textures. The first time I played around with this, I was wrong. I thought the textures would basically um, work with the maps. And they do if they're on the right blend thing. But if I go ahead and go into this one and put it as normal and then crank up the texture, you'll see it actually just textures the whole thing. So think of it like a layer unto itself. Okay. Now within the texture, there's a lot of different things. If I want to work with something like the ambient occlusion, I could change the blending mode. Where's the blending? There it is. Change it down to something like um, multiply or add or anything like that. And then those two can start to work together to get some kind of grunge look to it. Um, and again, you can do a lot of different things. So I can do uh, linear dodge. So it's taking the ambient occlusion and it's just filling this. You'll notice that there's a seam right here. 
make sure that triplanar is on. I always have this on with textures. That way, if somebody else is using it, they don't have to work about worry about seam correction. Brightness does what you think it would do, increases the brightness of the contrast of the image. And there you go. So you can kind of play around with that. You can add another texture to work with this as well. Um, and that's pretty much it. So if I make a smart material off of this, it will take these and use them in anything. So it will be thickness, but not the image, but the thickness of the object. Um, so you can work with a variety of different objects. Again, I'll just do a layer, name that layer whatever you want. So I'm just going to, you know, name this gold test. And then you would put these things underneath the gold test, right click it and create smart material. And you're good to go. So now we kind of know some of the options. Let's go ahead and make one or two smart materials. These aren't going to be anything fancy, but they're going to kind of help illustrate um, what we're going for. So I call this gold fine, but eventually we're going to make it a tarnish. So just <laughs> stick with me as I go through this. I'm going to create a metal gold look at the start, like such. And now I kind of want some edge detail. So I'm going to create a new fill layer. There we go. Uh, I do want it white or light. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Metallic, crank it up. Add black mask, right click this, add generator, and then create, you could use the one that we just looked at, or you can use any of these. So for example, I could click metal or metal edgeware, and right off the gate, it looks good, but you can go through these and very quickly understand what they do. Um, wear level, you can probably assume what that does. Wear contrast, same thing as contrast. Use triplanar, always have that on. Um, grunge amount, I can increase this. I can go down here and actually add a grunge map like that. Now, I don't want a grunge map. I kind of want it just that clean looking look. And then I can um, change the smoothness, play around with it, get what I want. But this is going to be a smart mask when, when I create it using the different uh, world normal and position and curvature and things of that nature. Now, if I go back to this gold color, we can change this down and get this cool look. So if I make that like tarnish like that, we're getting this cool beat up metal look like such. Now I like what that looks like. Okay. Now I also want to fill in these, these uh, little crevices here. Again, I just want the color to be black because I'm going to multiply this on top of this. Right click black mask, right click that black mask, and then do add generator. Again, we're going to do the one that we talked about this time. So it's doing curvature. I'm going to do ambient occlusion. Invert this, put it to normal. There we go. And you can see it's only doing the ambient occlusion down here. But even that small detail looks great. I can change the balance, make it smaller or bigger. I'm going to make it bigger because I like it being a little dark like that. And then increase the blur like that. Now I'm going to also add a curvature map at the same time. So under my ambient occlusion, I'm going to create that to multiply. Go to my curvature, uh, increase this quite a bit. Let's go ahead and multiply this. I can't see anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this and make it red. What this does is it lets me very clearly see what the mask is affecting. Sometimes the black is hard to see. So I'm going to play around with some of these things, multiply, maybe normal. Starting to get something. It looks like the ambient occlusion is affecting this. So if I go to the ambient occlusion, uh, I am going to make this concave though, or cavities. Ambient occlusion, there we go. Invert that, nope. Invert the curvature, that's what I want to do. So playing around, you can kind of problem solving it through this. I'm going to increase the contrast. Decrease this huge, this big, this large, and that's getting closer and closer to what I actually want. Just like that. And then M inclusion, crank that, so it's mixing that as well. Change this to black. And that's way too hard, so I'm going to do the global blur. 
increase that up a bit. And again, I would spend probably hours making these smart materials, but we're just going to, you know, for tutorial sake, make this fast. So I'm going to hit multiply on that one, crank it down a little bit so it's not too strong. And there we have a nice tarnished look. Okay. So if I want to create a smart material, I'm going to go ahead and name this folder tarnished metal. Right click it and then create smart material and it automatically generates something like that. And there you go. Now I want to create something new. So I'm going to delete everything, create a new folder, call this wood and gold. I end up not using the gold, but that's okay. So wood and gold, create a new folder or a new fill layer. Okay. And I'm going to get a material and drag that onto this. Put that in the folder, this gray thing's above it. There we go. So now I have this wood thing. I want to go ahead and decrease the normal because it's always too strong right out the gate. So go to normal, crank that down. It's not the normal effect and it's the height map. Crank this down. I'm just going to make like 15. Okay. Now you can see some of the detail going through, but that's okay. Right? Because we, we're making a smart material. We're not making a material specifically for this object. So that's fine. If I select this and go to uh, triplanar projection, that's always the best thing in smart materials, in my opinion. Uh, I've purchased a couple of smart materials that don't have this, and it's a nightmare to work with seams. So now I have this wood. I want to create some highlights, so a fill layer. Um, white is fine. I don't need roughness or metal or anything like that. Go ahead and make that pure white. Bring it down maybe just a bit. There we go. Right click, black mask, not bitmap, oops. Black mask, right click that, add generator, click that, and we're going to do the MG mask again. And right out of the gate, I like the curvature that it's giving to it. So I'm going to change this to a more yellow look. See how that works out? I'm liking this. It's looking a little bit like wood. Um, a little too yellow, kind of an ugly color, but we'll play around with that later. Going to go back to the curvature, play around with a few things, maybe some contrast, see how that works out. Again, I like what this is looking like. Increase the brightness so it's a little bit brighter. Let's increase the normal mix to 100% or 61%. So we can see this. I'm going to blur this a little bit so it's very soft now. Crank that back down. Again, don't like this. I'm going to overlay this. Still not looking quite right. Looking better. It's not just a simple wood texture. Let's go ahead and do maybe a different color. Ooh, right there. I like that. It's like a dark, burnt wood color right there. And there we go. So that's looking very, very cool. Now, if I want to add maybe a gradient to this, so I'm going to right-click Black Mask, right-click, Add Generator. You're starting to get the flow, I hope. Going to do MG Mask again. Going to turn off Curvature. Going to turn on Position Gradient. Okay. Going to go ahead and maybe invert that. Go back up to this, make it dark. So it's adding that burnt look down to the bottom. That's just adding variety. There we go. So multiply that and like what that is. Play around with the so it's not so strong. And then just right click this, the folder, create smart material, and now we have that wood gold. Now I should have renamed it because there's no gold on this, but you know, whatever. I'm going to go ahead and show you now. I'm going to open up a new object. This is just a coin. So let me find that here. And I need a normal map, nothing else, because I'm going to bake the other maps. So select normal map and then bake everything but the normal map. And that'll take a bit. And I'm going to apply these two smart materials so you can see how it affects these. So go to the tarnished metal for, oh, I'll do the wood first. And you can see, now again, we didn't take tons of time to make this material. But you can see how this is working out. It just applies it. It uses the different masks. Um, this one sets it so flat you can't see the gradient very well. 
so it's not a good example to show you. But let's look at the tarnished um, metal. This one looks very cool. Got to turn off this wood though. And you can see it's using the masks and it's a smart material right off the gate. Now I can use this on, if I'm making a treasure, treasure trove, I can make this and just drag this onto everything and it works. Let's go ahead and look at this preview, um, preview sphere that comes with, with this. And turn off that bronze armor. Just throw that tarnished metal in. And you can see it looks pretty good. We spent 10 seconds making this material. If you spend more time, it's going to look a lot better, obviously. Let's throw the wood in there. And that looks really kind of cool. You can see how it kind of uh, darkens from the bottom up. And that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I, I hope that it was short enough that you didn't you know, lose attention. Uh, if you like it, please give us a thumbs up. That helps us. And definitely leave comments below. I, we, I love hearing from you guys, and I try and respond to those. I do read all of those. Also consider following us on social media. We have a Twitter and Facebook. Also, uh, consider supporting us on Patreon. The more you do that, the more tutorials we can make. Thank you so much for your time. Have an awesome day.